It's the Midnight Trucking Radio Network. Eric Carley here at the Great American Trucking Show 2011 in Dallas, Texas. And joining us right now from Chevron, Jim Gamble. Jim, how are you? I'm doing great, Eric. Hey, thanks for being here. You and I walked through the Dello truck today. This is just a, a terrific experience. First of all, tell us about the Dello truck um, and where drivers are going to see it. Uh, we know that, uh, in fact, they can go to the website and find out more about the dates and the stops and everything else. But the experience itself, it's, it's just such a great learning experience as you and I walk through this together. What's the first thing as we walk into the Dello truck the drivers are going to start to learn about? Well, thanks, Eric. It's really a pleasure being here on Ready With You again and talking to your listeners. So I hope the first thing that people see is really when they go in, they talk about their issues. Yeah. We talk about trucking. We talk about what's going on with you, the big issues with the economy, uh, CSA. We talk about uh, reliability and, you know, making the equipment last as long as it possibly can. Those are things that, uh, that people are interested in talking about. Right. Those are the issues. And so that's how we built the truck is around what, what they want, really want to talk about. And it's really interesting to look at that because it was really you guys really really had it spot on with these issues and it was terrific to know that and I think you get that kind of feedback the driver wants to know first of all that you know somebody's actually got their finger on the pulse of what's going on with the driver and then in the industry and what they're facing every single day what they're concerned about every day why was that so important well I think it's really important because they're the ones deciding what they're going to do. I think the trucking industry is just vitally important to us. Yeah. And it's vitally important to our business. We're part of the trucking industry. Yeah. The oil is just integral with it. And so uh, we think we, we're a part of that industry. The driver plays a central role. Right. And so we got to really listen to them. And it's, uh, it's a harder thing than you think. Yeah. But we do a lot of surveys. We work with a lot of people like you guys to try to right. help us. What kind of issues are people really thinking about? Sure. And we try to build our, our product around that. Yeah, and it's very interactive. And I you know, encourage drivers to, anytime you can, check it out and go through this. And as we move on through the truck, we're going to learn more about also about intervals and something that you know that uh, it was kind of an interesting point for me maybe a learning point for me too you know you've got to think about all of the different makes that are out there uh the different year models what what's going on inside that engine what the components each of that the components of that engine is trying to do um, and what those intervals are going to be for your particular application based on all of this information. It just seems like it, it's almost overwhelming, but obviously for each driver, you're, they're going to find, okay, well, there's my truck, there's the year of my truck, there's the engine that I'm running inside that truck, and that's where kind of where I need to be. Again, that's important to make that connection to their very operation. And you guys lined it out very well inside the truck, the Dello truck. Yeah, well, thanks. And we, and we really tried hard. We uh, respect the OEMs, but we also respect the drivers who are doing it. And there's a couple of things, like when you look at the drain intervals in particular, right. like you said, there's what the OEM recommends, but you also got to look at what kind of service you're in. Is it severe, moderate, heavy duty? And, exactly. And, and what does that mean? And usually it's by fuel usage. Mm -hmm. You know, the more fuel you use, they figure the heavier loads, maybe it's in the Rockies or right. someplace, so you maybe a more severe service as opposed to flat over the road might be uh, less severe. Right, right. Uh, so when you look at these, you got your drain oil, but there's also other factors. Uh, people have what they're comfortable with. Right, sure. Here's what the OEM recommends, but here's what I can do. Right. Now, as we're starting to run our own businesses, and we say, as the truckers running their own businesses and our operator or a fleet, you got multiple. You have to pick and say, well, where do I really want to be? Because mm -hmm. the OEM's recommending thirty-five thousand miles. Right. You know, where's my service? Can I go to forty? Or maybe I'm comfortable. Most owner operators are still in twelve to fourteen thousand miles because really protecting that investment is right. really important to them. So can they push it out a bit because they need to be a little more competitive? Every penny. Mm -hmm. is so many dollars back in their pocket. Mm -hmm. So as they start making these decisions, we just seek to have a dialogue really around it. We're not saying everybody should move to 35 or 50 or 70. That's right. not the point. Right. The point is really, where are you now? What are the risks? And how do you manage those at any dra drain interval you have? The risk right. could be on the, hey, it's a little more expensive, but you're changing shorter, but uh, very conservative. Yeah. Or you could push it out a little bit, but what are those risks and how do I manage them? And that's what we try to get going is just a dialogue one-on-one -on -one with people who know the oils, they know how the oil analysis works, what the risks really are, yeah. and when it might be appropriate, when it might not, and really just, just talk about it. You know, and it was interesting looking at the different components from the years going back to 1990 to 2007 as, as we look at the components of the engine and how they physically changed inside that engine. It's, it's again, Knowing what your engine is doing, what those components are working at doing, and what you're, what you're trying to protect, 
what your what uh, what the best preventive measures are. Do you get a lot of surprises? I kind of that was kind of an eye opener for me, just looking at the the design difference here with the the components of the engine. But that that to me is something that that again I think might even be a surprise to those veteran drivers that are out there. Yeah, I, I think I think you're right. I know we were surprised. We yeah. actually went back and looked at pistons going from 1990 mm -hmm. at intervals up to 2007, 2010. Right. And it's amazing the technology changes. Yeah. Now this happens inside the engine. I think that's why we're surprised because we don't see that part. Most right. drivers pay a lot of attention to the outside. They can tell you what that looks like. Right. But inside the pistons, you don't. And of course, that's where the oil operates. Yeah. And so we were looking at that and saying, hey, we're trying to explain to people why oils change. You know, we've got the API service categories, maybe starting in 1990, it was a CD. Right, right. You know, kind of level, then it's moved up this nomenclature. No one really knows what it means, but you get more advanced and they're more expensive. Right, But right. why? Right, right. You know, why? What's really going on? And you can actually see it. A lot of it's driven by pollution. Some of it's driven by efficiency. Yeah, yeah. But uh, as you and I saw, and, you're, and the folks who come to see the truck will see, there's a big difference, and you can really begin to understand that the oil that we used in 1990 is very, very different very than the different. oil we use today. Very different, and it's it's amazing to look. In, in fact, you guys, you know, have you know just a basically a partial breakdown here uh, of an engine. And now, was this engine a million mile engine that that was broken down that we were seeing this uh, these components here? Yeah, yeah, it was. A lot of people are interested wow. in making the equipment uh, last as long as they can. Yeah, and so this is an equipment breakdown. We did is we said, hey, we just tore it down at 1.1 million miles, Yeah, and we just took a look at the parts. Right. And the parts look great. Most mechanics that look at those parts make the comment, and I've been there with them, they'll say, these parts don't look like they got a million miles on they them. They just don't. Yeah, so they look re very good. Yeah. In fact, they put them uh, back in, uh, many of them, and they're running running a little further. Right. Now, there's some point at which you need to do the end frame or you need to send it in the shop, but the point is, I mean, you don't have to be a, a real astute a business guy to know that if you spend a lot of money for a truck, if you can make it last a little bit longer, right. all that goes right to your bottom line, right in your pocket. Yeah. And yeah. people like that, right? If you can get it last a little longer, it just goes right to your bottom line. Yeah, it's terrific. Um, and then, you know, as we round the corner, uh, we, we start learning about the synthetic blend myth. And, and what are some of those myths that are out there? And what, is, uh, what are the folks there at Chevron doing to kind of dispel some of those, those myths that are there? Well, that's a great question. Thanks for asking that. But the, um, the issue with the synthetic blends, of course, is they use a, a higher quality base oil, right. which people call synthetic, mm -hmm. and they blend it with additives and conventional oil to create this blend. And for most people, uh, you know, pretty logical, right? It would be a little bit better because of that. Yeah, yeah. And, but what really happens is it's the interaction of the components that's really critical. There really are a chemical creation that goes on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you can't just add those parts up and create a better oil. Right. So we decided to test our conventional Della 400 LE 15W40 against almost everybody's synthetic blend. Mm -hmm. And we just did some standard wear tests, some oxidation tests, which test how long it can go before it starts to break down, some tests that kind of how well it coats, you know, if it starts to coat the equipment, preventing heat transfer, uh, sure. you know, some coating kind of tests. We did some various tests just to say, hey, do these products outperform? And we were very surprised by the results that, in fact, our conventional Della 400 LE outperformed these synthetic blends. Mm -hmm. And we present that data. Now, these are tests, and they're designed to really stress oils. You know, so it's a little different than being in the engine. But we were absolutely shocked by it. And yeah. what's not there that will be there perhaps for some of the listeners is we did the same thing with synthetics. We said, well, how about synthetics? Because clearly, those are four times as much. Those must be better. Right, right. If you pay that much for it, yeah. why wouldn't it be a lot better? Sure. And those tests came back with the same results. Wow. And it's, it's a little shocking. So synthetics do play a role. Um, we really think that it's really the interaction of the components, but you really got to be selective before you spend that extra money. So maybe you are running where it's very, very cold, you know, up in Canada, Alaska. Mm -hmm. Those are great applications for it. Um, you know, maybe some of the fuel economy oils, if you're really interested in that one, 1 1.2% that you can get maybe an edge. It's hard to measure, but maybe that's something that you want to do for your truck. Right. Uh, maybe those have a play because there it's a different kind of interaction, lighter viscosity base oils. You know, they, they flow a little easier, and that's how you get the fuel economy. Uh, those are good applications. But I tell you, in the 1540, which 93% of the people out there are still using 1540 mm -hmm. to protect their investment, mm -hmm. um, the conventional oils will really outperform those synthetic blends is really our prediction. And we're wow. just asking people to check with your supplier, be sure it's right for you. 
um, even if you're not buying our oil, just question it because it's extra expense and, you know, you could be investing somewhere else. Right, right, right. You know?